What's up everyone? Welcome to another edition of Theron's Thoughts. My name's Theron Chetty. This is my bedroom. Hope everyone's having a great week. Um, I am. It was my birthday last weekend. I normally don't tell anybody, but it was on Facebook, so I started getting all these messages. So, just trying to process getting older in the entertainment industry. I had some auditions here and there, but honestly, like, it's so hard to book these like TV jobs and movie jobs. I'm just trying not to think about it too much. Last week, my phone was blowing up because I know like a I know like a lot of comedians, obviously, and uh, there's this girl named Sarah Cooper, who I don't know of really that well. I guess she does like this lip syncing the Trump speeches. Like I've I've seen the videos, but I don't I don't I haven't done like a uh, a deep dive and watched them. I've just seen the concept of it and. Whatever, it just like when I saw it the first time, I was like, oh, here's another viral girl making something on social media. And, you know, I've seen that happen before. But a while, like a couple weeks ago, it was trending when Ellen was in trouble and it was like, replace Ellen with Sarah Cooper. And I was like, what? <laughs> it was kind of funny to me because I was like, I mean, nobody has really heard her speak, but people were like, oh, she should take over this talk show. Anyways, I didn't think anything of it. But then I guess like last week, she guest hosted Jimmy Kimmel and then she got like a Netflix special. By the way, uh, I guess she does stand up, newsflash, uh, which great, good for her. But my phone was blowing up because a lot of comedians, like fam like established comedians, not famous, but established people like guys from Last Comic Standing, like writers for a writer for the Conan O'Brien show, like they were tweeting about how like comedy's not fair, how like you know, you spend years and years performing and getting better at your craft. And then like some viral sensation comes out. Like I'm pretty sure she hasn't done stand up more than five, 10 years. I can almost guess that. But, and there are a lot of people out there who have done comedy for years and years. And they're like, hey, you know what? How come, you know, I, I actually shot a special and Netflix won't buy it. When I see this stuff now, I'm like dead to it. I'll be honest with you. Like, I don't think anything of it. And I kind of laugh at it because I'm so focused on just doing my own stuff. But there's this misconception, which I clearly was not aware of. Like when you start doing comedy that if you're funny, like you'll be taken care of the rest of your life. Like that's not how comedy works. It's not a meritocracy where if you put in X amount of years, like being a doctor, you, you go to medical school, you do your residency, and then you become a doctor. In comedy, there's no rules to this. Like... I've just seen it happen so many times uh, as I've been coming up. There's comedy and then there's like the business side of it, which makes no sense. But honestly, if you think about it, it's a smart move by Netflix because they really care about the metrics. Like they want numbers and the girl, Sarah Cooper, again, I don't really follow her. I'm not a fan, but hey, she's young. She's diverse. She's viral. She's hot right now. She can attract a lot of eyeballs on Netflix, whether her special is great or not. I mean, it's it's a big deal. There was a, a comedian who's kind of famous now, and he met with me because he wanted me to help him write for his second one. And his first one was like, whatever. <laughs> but I was like, well, I guess he's famous. So they wanted to give him another one. And it makes sense because, again, he attracts eyeballs to the network. Like, that's, that trumps... That trumps being good in so many different ways. Like people have this thing where like, oh, you've got to be funny. You know, you do and you don't. But like Nick Cannon put out a special. I didn't watch it, but he was getting trashed for it. But it's Nick Cannon. Like that guy's a household name. Like can't knock his other stuff. And that's the thing about showbiz. Like if you're good in one area, you can kind of carry that over into something else. When I heard the Sarah Cooper stuff, I was like, hey, God bless her. You know, I root for all comics. I really do. Like I've never... Never, I've never gone against a comedian unless they're like a total hack and there's or there's steel material. But in this girl's case, like, hey, you know what? I wish I was discovered when I was 23 or however old she was. Like, I wish that was me. Like, I'll say that. And I'm sure all these other comedians wish it was them too. But, you know, everyone has different roots. As I've said this before, like, you have to follow your own path and hopefully it'll work out in whatever way you you want it to. Let me break down, like, how I think people make it in comedy. I mean, now, especially, it's always changing. Like the digital landscape has changed everything. Now, like 
you become viral and you're hot and like you get you get that first entry point right in the showbiz and that gets you going right like take angela johnson that nail salon bit like that she's like a comedian female comedian and her five minute thing went viral and that blew her up or russell peters his you know he's an experienced comedian but his viral thing kind of got him going and got him through a lot of gates right because then you then you have a fan base behind you or you spend years building one uh success after the other it's a cumulative thing like like take jimmy kimmel right he was a radio guy and then he was on the man show and then he's hosting abc that's kind of an easy example but you see his climb and i've also seen that with actors like actors also like start off like doing you know co-stars guest stars and they're on you know they're on uh their own series so you get approved slowly but it's that first entry point like that's always the hardest and that's why they call it a break because you kind of have to get lucky in some capacity uh or uh the i think the third final way is somebody famous helps you right and they just shoehorn you in like for example like george lopez was on the scene for years and years you know he was, a, he was an experienced comedian and finally sandra bullock produced his sitcom and you know she was like you know what this is my show i'm gonna produce it and it became a household name uh he also had the chops to back it up or you know i've heard david spade say dennis miller was instrumental of him getting the hbo young comedian special which really got him eyeballs from lauren michaels uh, I heard Kevin Nealon say that about Dana Carvey, who really vouched for him to get an SNL. Leslie Jones got an SNL through Chris Rock. I mean, you know, having a famous friend kind of pull you in, that's, that's a big deal. And I never used to subscribe to this stuff when I was younger. I, was, I just used to think like, oh, if you're funny, if you make stuff, like someone will see you and just, you know. But I think a lot of these other things can play in. And at the end of the day, is it in your stars? One last thing, I really think the people who spend their time hating on other comedians, like that's just, it's so negative, really. I think the successful comedians or actors or whoever, like I've been around a few and they really don't talk shit about people. Like they really just kind of do their own thing and kind of have this one, one track mind where they wanted to keep climbing and not look back. So keep that in mind. Have a great week. I'll talk to you guys soon. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks. See ya. Bye.